Honorable Senators, I rise today to speak on Bill S-240, an act to amend the Criminal Code and the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act on the trafficking of human organs. I would first of all like to thank Senator Tula Jan for her tireless work on this issue and to acknowledge her leadership in bringing this very important issue forward. Bill S-240 amends the Criminal Code to create new offenses in relation to trafficking in human organs and tissue. It also provides the minister the discretion to deem a permanent resident inadmissible if the minister is of the opinion that a person has engaged in any activities related to trafficking in human organs or tissue. Before I begin, let me share with you a story of a young tourist visiting family in the Philippines. Jane was a recent college graduate from Australia and decided to visit family members in the Philippines. At a nearby bar, she met a good-looking stranger claiming to be a chef and insisted on bringing her to his restaurant for a new and exciting di dining experience. Jane doesn't remember much of her evening. She remembers laughing and thinking the man was kind and generous. After only her second drink, she blacked out. The next thing she remembers is waking up freezing, naked, covered in ice in a bathtub. She tried to move, but her body was in tremendous pain. After many minutes of trying to get out of the bathtub, she saw on her side a poorly stitched bloody wound. Near the bathtub, there was a phone and a note which said, seek emer emergency care right away. Jane's kidney was stolen from her. For many people, just like Jane, victims of human organ trafficking, reality is turned into horror in a matter of seconds. Jane is lucky to be alive today. Many victims of organ trafficking have disappeared under suspicious circumstances, and their bodies are later discovered with internal organs missing. Honorable Senators, Human organ trafficking is an issue in many developing countries where people are tricked into selling and even donating kidneys and other parts. These organs are sold to wealthy foreigners who desperately need them. These circumstances are emulated by the United Nations Office and Drugs and Crime. And I quote, desperate situations of both recipients and donors create an avenue ready for exploitation by international organ trafficking syndicates. Traffickers exploit the desperation of donors to improve the economic situation of themselves and their families. And they exploit the desperation of recipients who may have a few, few other options to improve or prolong their lives." End of quote. Honorable Senators, organ donation is strictly regulated in most countries around the world. Yet, black market is alive and well. Kidneys are the organ most trafficked, occupying 75% of the illicit trade in organs. Currently, data from the World Health Organization states that 11,000 human organs were obtained on the black market in 2010, and this number is steadily rising every year. In fact, the number of organ donations from deceased Canadians has surged in recent years boosted by improvements in the organ donation system. This means at least one organ is sold every hour, each day, and every day of the year. According to the United Nations, approximately 10,000 illegal kidney transplants are being performed worldwide each year. Poor, desperate people around the world are selling their kidneys for $1,000 and sometimes even as low as $500. However, driven by the shortage of li living organs, particularly kidneys, Canadians are pa patients are turning to the Canadian patients are turning to the illegal organ trade in countries like India, Pakistan, and the Philippines. Honorable Senators, I was really shocked to see that Canada is among the top 10, top 10 global importer of organs. According to the United Nations and quoted on the Persons Against the Crime of Trafficking in Humans, Ottawa, such practices have increased in recent decades due to the growing demand for li live or donor organ transplants. 
Although some countries in Asia are popular, popular destinations to obtain an organ through the black market, this crime does not only occur in countries overseas. I remember so vividly watching the news one evening and hearing about Kendrick Johnson's death. In Georgia, his body was found on school property in 2013. The local sheriff quickly determined that death was a freak accident due to suffo suffocation since his body was discovered stuck in a rolled up mattress in the school gym. Johnson's parents would not accept it. Many months after his death, his parents obtained a court order to have his body exhumed for an independent autopsy. The discovery was shocking. The course was stuffed with newspaper clippings. The brain, heart, lungs, and liver were missing. Four major organs were stolen from Kendrick Johnson. He was killed in his hometown, in his neighborhood, and his body discovered on safe school property. As young as only 17 years old, his life was robbed by the senseless crime of organ trafficking. Kendrick Johnson's murder is a reminder that organ trafficking can occur anywhere, even here. Sadly, honorable senators, children sold into slavery or a life of sexual abuse are also exploited by their organs to make profit. And sometimes the harvesting of children's organs happens in places we least expect it. Casa de Mama Rosa was known as a respected orphanage in Zamora, Mexico. This is until authorities raided the orphanage and discovered that other 500 children were being kept against their will in cramped conditions. The orphanage had been open for 40 years. After numerous suspicious phone calls, when authorities finally investigated the home, they figured out that in addition to horrible living conditions, the orphanage was a center of a child organ trafficking scheme. Mama Rosa ran the orphanage, and she and eight adults were accused and charged with child abuse. In addition to living in appalling conditions with rats and insects in a residential facility, children with biological families were denied all contact with them. The young boys and girls suffered from severe malnutrition and were forced to beg on the streets. However, the horror does not stop here. Found inside an ice cream truck close to the orphanage were the frozen bodies of little boys and girls with missing organs. An orphanage based on charity work, based on an honest cause to give lost children a safe and loving home, turned into a facility of starvation, torture, organ harvesting, and murder. It sickens me to think that possibly one day Mama Rosa could have sold one of these children's kidneys to a Canadian individual, desperately seeking a new kidney. This wealthy patient might have bought the kidney without asking where it came from to avoid the terrible truth. This is the undeniable truth of a human organ trafficking industry. It is absolutely wrong, morally wrong. Honorable Senators, the people who gain are the wealthiest transplant patients who can afford to buy a kidney, the doctors, hospital administrators, and traffickers. In her speech, Senator Tulajan said, and I quote, organ trafficking is the exploitation of the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized in our society. The recipients are wealthy, influential citizens from foreign countries, largely Western countries, who should be held criminally responsible, end of quote. Unfortunately, human organ trafficking is not perceived as an urgent issue, including here in Canada. Once again, Bill S-240 amends the criminal code to create new offenses in relation to trafficking in human organs and tissues. It also provides the minister the discretion to deem a permanent resident inadmissible if the minister is of the opinion that the person has engaged in any activities related to trafficking in human organs or tissue. It is crucial our country shows leadership by demonstrating active participation in the detention, investigation, and prosecution of those who obtain an organ or a tissue to be transplanted into their body or another person's body, particularly when the individual was a forced donor and did not give informed consent to the removal. 
As we speak, another individual has lost an organ, perhaps even a young child. For this reason, honorable senators, I urge you to vote quickly in favor of Bill S-240, an act to amend criminal code and the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act on trafficking of human organs. I urge you to think of Jane, of Kendrick Johnson, of other young men, women, and children who are brought under a knife to have their organs forcibly taken from them and given to wealthy individuals with no questions asked. With the growing number of black market organs sold and bought, we cannot rest until all citizens of the world are free from organ trafficking and we stop being the top 10 country in organ trafficking. Honorable Senators, I want to once again thank Senator Atullah Jan for her leadership on this, and I humbly ask you to pass this bill quickly so that it can go to the House of Commons and become a law. We can no longer shut our eyes to organ trafficking. Thank you. Madam La President, Senator Saint Germain, Madam Speaker, I ask that the. Thank you very much. Senator, would you accept the question? Senator thank Cordy. you very much, and uh, thank you firstly to Senator Tula John, who uh, brought this, uh, this uh, bill to the Senate and to the Human Rights Committee, where we heard exceptional testimony from particularly David Madison, David Kilgore, who are experts in this whole thing. And thank you very much, uh, Senator, for your speech. It, unfortunately, it sounded like it was a, hum a, a science fiction story that you were telling, and to find out that these things are actually going on in the world is pretty scary. Uh, one of the things that we heard about was Canadians who travel to, in this case it was China, for uh, transplants, and then they come back. Clearly their, their family doctor knows that they have gotten a transplanted organ. So have you thought at all about the responsibility that the medical profession in Canada has uh, to reporting those kinds of things where they know that somebody has gone <coughs> offshore out of Canada to get a transplant, returned with a new kidney, I think is the, the number one thing that you said. Do they have a responsibility to report that to the medical board or to, to anybody? Senator Jaffer. Thank you very much, uh, Senator. And I know that your, your Human Rights Committee heard many, many testimonies. You know, 75% of the organs that are transplanted are kidneys. I, I believe that the medical profession has a responsibility and the profession will be guided in such a way. But at this point, I believe the first step is to make this an offense, and then incrementally we can do further things. Thank you very much. You have a question, Senator Mercer? Yes, um, Senator uh, <coughs> Jaffer. Um, one of the answers to, to, to this problem is to make uh, more and more organs available at home uh, through the natural process. And indeed, um, a very brief story before I get to my question is that when I became the executive director of the Kidney Foundation of Canada in Nova Scotia back in 1978, Nova Scotia was one of the provinces that did not have an organ donor card attached to its driver's license. Um, I organized the volunteers, and they went and saw the Minister of Transportation and talked to him about having the organ donor card. The reason I'm telling the story is that minister is now a member of this chamber, and I wanted to pay tribute to, to Senator McGuinness, who very quickly said yes, and then uh, and added the organ donor card to the driver's licenses in Nova Scotia and has saved, saved hundreds, if not thousands, of lives by that one little action. And so the next time you see Senator McGuinness, please thank him for that. W was there any discussion through the whole debate of this about continuing to promote the ongoing assigning of organ donor cards by Canadians so that tens of thousands of, of healthy organs are not being uh, w wasted after the death, uh, the natural death of, of Canadians? Jennifer? Mercer, that's a really important uh, uh, question you ask, and that's how we can be proactive in making sure we have enough organs by having that card. Unfortunately, I'm not a member of the Human Rights Committee, so I cannot tell you that, but I'm sure that others will be able to answer that question. Thank you.